So I'm up to 14 million. I've been doing a lot of contracts. And in fact, we have some new technology to take a look at. But yeah, we're up to 14 million. We need 16 million to launch an Aurora Cruiser. So we're getting there. Uh, we're certainly, you know, speeding up the process. I messed around a bit more with how the stuff is, you know, uh, allocated with science and all that. And I'm up to 6,820. So if we get anything extra mod-wise, I can unlock it very easily. And we'd have gotten something extra, but first, because time has passed, we want to see where the Horizon Probe is at. Because, uh, you know, doing doing the contracts is obviously taking some time. So it's gotten, it was, uh, it was just passing the moon before. Oh, I got another contract for another. Okay, well, I could do that. Uh, it was just passing the moon. It's like orbit. And now we're out over here with the probe. So uh, it looks like it's getting there. I mean, it says it's got 100 or one year and 179 days left. It's it's a trucking along. In fact, we're going to launch another craft to Eve. We're going to send a, a rumbler to Eve. But first, we have some new stuff to take a look at. So... It was suggested a while ago that I take a look at OPT space plane parts, which is uh, orbits, portal technology, or something like that. And it certainly adds some really, really cool space plane parts. So, like, for example, you have, like, this cockpit, uh, which is designed for re-entry into the atmosphere. There's this one. Uh, that one looks quite rad. I really like the design of that one. There's this one. Again, really cool. Then you got some strange shape ones. Uh, I think there's a drone core, right? Yeah, that's a drone core. And then there is this one. It's my favorite one, in fact. It's, it's kind of duck-like, but it's really cool. And then finally, there is this one. And they all have parts that go with them. So like, say, you know, say we do my favorite one here and we go to fuel tanks. There are tanks that go along with this. Oh, that's the shuttle one so let's do it like like that you know so you can build this stuff up backwards you can put like a fuel tank there you could go through to utility and you know find the rad cargo bay like that all right so there's some cool stuff in fact let's take all these parts off uh let's go back to fuel tanks let's uh which one is it it's gotta be this one Nope, that one's too small. That one's too small. Oh, geez, which one was it? It can't be that one. There's, uh... Oh, gosh. Okay. Obviously... Uh, no, let's do something else. How about, let's let's try something else here. Let's go to Utility. And I wanted to show you this cargo bay, which is really sweet, and then this docking port. Oop. So this cargo bay here has two ways that it can open. It can open on the top or the bottom which is kind of cool. And in fact, we're considering this for kind of like an interplanetary shuttle because that way, if you land the thing and you have a like a rover or something stashed in it, you can open up the bottom and lower it out. Or if you're in space and need to put something in it, you can kind of go at it from either angle, which is quite cool. So we can close those off and then we can check out this. So the docking port, Right, so you can you know dock with either this or if you just need a little bit extra guidance or clearance, you could do that, which is quite cool. And obviously, you would have to attach a docking port to it, but it's just pretty cool. So there's a lot of rad parts. There's also a science bay, a lab, just like you know you would see. Wait, there's shutters? Oh, I didn't know there were shutters. Oh, and then you can put the lights on. Oh, it's so cool. Uh, there's different. Uh, let me go to the fuel tanks. There's different loadouts for the fuel tanks, kind of like you see in B9. So, like, if I put this one on, you could see that I could have it just liquid fuel, uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer, or back to just a fuselage. And then there's a few new engines that come along with it. I like the aero spike. It's quite cool. It consumes liquid fuel and oxidizer, but it's got a max thrust of 875, which is quite good. Uh, this looks like a like some type of like Star Wars taxi that you would see on like Coruscant already. I don't know if that would actually fly. Uh, they have this. I really like this engine. So this is actually a rocket, but it consumes air. And the more uh, airflow it has, the more efficient the rocket is. It's kind of a cool idea. There's this 
big old one. Uh, by the way, that has 290 thrust, but you know you get more efficiency while you're in atmosphere. I like this one. This one's very futuristic looking. It has a max thrust of 1500, so it is incredibly powerful. Almost a little overpowered, almost. Uh, but yeah, I mean it. It does suck down quite a bit of fuel. And then finally, there is the one that we're going to test out, which is this one. This is an entire engine. It has its own intake, and the engine itself uh, is an air-breathing engine. But what it can do is when you get up to like hyper speeds, it super compresses the air, and then allows you to use that as kind of a, you know, like a boost in, in speed and everything. So it kind of gets more efficient and quicker. Uh, and is meant for high speeds. But we, we actually have an aircraft to test out that we have built. Uh, it's actually pretty cool, and I've been using it a little bit. Where is it at? It's the Typhoon AC-1, AC aircraft. So it's a Typhoon-style aircraft, and what's going to happen is there are different variations that we can have on this thing. Uh, in particular, we could put... Uh, sa uh, saber engines or the what are they called? Oh gosh, I don't even remember what they are. Yeah, the rapier engines on the back to make it a space plane if we wanted to. So there's different loadouts we can have. We could switch out this part here so it's not just fuel. We could put a, uh, a docking port on it. It has a drone core on purpose because we're going to fly around with it uh, not having a pilot this time around. And of course, I have different variations that I've done where I've taken this out, uh, put a, a, a what you might call it oh gosh that, that, not the docking port the uh dock no no the bay the oh gosh now i gotta look it up i just had a brain fart oh this is embarrassing utility do I do that uh, cargo bay yes that's it that's the word i was looking for so i've done it with cargo bay to have science stuff in there but for the most part i've used it to do like the um take like a a crew report over certain parts of Kerbin and stuff like that. And it's really, really fast. So it's got two air intakes here. The air intakes are uh, connected with this. So this is the fuel tank. I could actually take the oxidizer out of this, but, um, you know, if I wanted to turn it into a space plane, I'm just going to leave it in there so I don't forget. Uh, we have that engine. It's got a couple control panels, and then it's got the... Yeah, it's it's a plane, right? It's it's pretty basic. So let's let's test this thing. Actually, I'm gonna go back. Uh, I'm gonna switch it out and take a person in with it instead, or not, no person. I'm gonna fly it with the drone. And of course, because we've you know we've recovered it, we get all the money back from it, so we don't lose any money doing that, which is really nice. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go boom control from here. So it's controlling from the drone core, uh, and then we have full control over our thing now i could add more air intakes to it and it would make the the engines a lot more efficient however it's just not really needed at this point like i don't even need air brakes i'll show you why it, it's got a good amount of drag on it to the point where you don't really need the air brakes to slow yourself down i just haven't put them on yet really um it lands really really well so this thing can get up to speed super quick, but I just wanted to show you guys that it does actually control reasonably well. Um, it doesn't go flying around. Obviously, we're using the procedural wings from B9. Um, we're using the landing gear that come with this mod, the space plane mod. I quite like them. They're really cool. In fact, let's take a look at them while we're flying around, uh, showing off the Typhoon. So, wow, that was weird. Did you see that? It, like randomly like disconnected. So if they have little lights on it, but they're definitely unique and not quite like the uh, the B9 one. So let's get rid of those. Boom. Oh. That's really weird. I don't know why it does that. I'm going to have to fix it. I've never noticed that before. So yeah, this thing flies around really, really well. Let's, uh, let's show you that it, it does, in fact, have a lot of drag. So like if I wanted to, you know, come in for a landing, we can have a little bit of thrust, right? And what I'm going to do is pull up. Now, like I said, this thing does slow down on its own fairly well. The, the thing that we've had before is that the aircraft itself glides way too much. So you um, you tend... Wow, that's going to freak me out now. I think that's a common thing now that I've added the air intakes on the front there. So if I just kill the engines, you can see I could pretty easily land here. But we're not going to. We're going to kick it back up. 
I just wanted to show you that it's possible. Don't break. Jeez, that's going to freak me out every time. I wanted to show you that this thing definitely gets up to speed. And it works quite well when you get into the higher atmosphere as well. Uh, it gets us to about 380 meters a second, and then it really starts kind of dragging a bit. But for the most part, this is a high-powered aircraft. It, it goes really, really quickly. And that was the, the design of it. It's basically so I could get around on Kerbin without having to use any type of, you know, crazy aircraft that I've developed. It's just, I just want a simple thing. Doesn't go into space. Doesn't have extra fuel on it. I know I have extra oxidizer. Hashtag deal with it. But for the most part, this thing will get me anywhere on Kerbin uh, efficiently. I, you know, you see that I only have 939 liquid fuel left, but that's more than enough to get to where I needed to get. And for those missions in particular, I just land it and recover it anyways. And as you see, it's it's still picking up speed, but we're not getting a little too absurd here. Yeah, and it just it generally flies really, really well. I'm really proud of this this aircraft and the design of it. Uh, it's super stable, and that's the most important part to me because an aircraft that starts wobbling around and like gets a lot of weird side like strafing going i just i don't like that so what what helps this thing be so stable is the front wings in fact we're getting up to our max speed here and where it does become unstable in this low uh atmosphere so the the front wings really help with the control which is nice um the rear wings are mostly just for lift but, you know, our control surfaces back there certainly help. So we're going to put a little bit of thrust in it. And we're going to turn the sucker around. We're going to go land it like we can. Uh, I do like the design of the bottom of this engine that they've done. Because it does have those air intakes on it itself. But I, I've, I've found in testing with this thing. Because I did it on my test game first. You know, I designed it first there. So I wasn't wasting a ton of money. Um, I found that the more air intake you have just the better this engine performs and in fact you could put a couple of these like on the side imagine you had one of those big body ones that i was using uh like the the cool um cockpit that i thought was really cool like the duck build one you can have a big body going across and then have two of these on either side of the body and it will get you into the higher atmosphere fairly easily and then you could use like the aero spike engine or the rocket ones that do air breathing as well you can use those to get you the rest of the way into space so in my testing it runs incredibly well uh these engines do and i'm really happy to put these parts on here so this this seems like it's going to make it onto my final mod list with 1.0 uh if they update it frequently enough but you can never really tell because you know things may break and it just may not cooperate with other mods but for the, the time being i would highly suggest this one uh it's definitely changed the way that i've done space planes that and the b9 procedural wings like you can make some really cool looking aircraft with that that or you know useful and are actually going to perform uh you know, functionally <laughs> not not well just they're going to function at least um, at least better than the stock stuff so let's bring this in for its finer final rather rather wow i can't talk it's descent. We're going in. We're, we're coming in. Now, ideally, we want to be going under 100 meters a second, and we'll definitely get there. We just want to make sure that we make it to the, the landing, you know, to begin with, because we don't want to cut it too short. So now we cut our engines. That will give us the amount of drag that we need by just pulling up a little bit here. And we want to come in gently, as gently as we can, at least. All right, we're starting to see our shadow get a bit closer. We maybe are coming in a little too fast, but we should be fine. Okay, and flare a little bit. Okay, brakes. It's not slowing us down. Do I have brakes enabled? Uh, we're just gonna keep going, it looks like. That's fine. That's why we're not having a pilot. Okay, gently, boom, okay. Brakes are not working. Break, brakes? Did I not? Do, do, do. Raise gear, enable steering, enable motor. Oh gosh, brakes on. Is it? Is it working? The brakes just aren't working. I don't know what just happened. They've worked since. I don't. I don't look. Maybe I did need the air brakes, but they have worked before. I don't know why the brakes aren't not working. What have I done? I, I, I just honestly don't know. Well, I guess now's the time to take a look at our lighting. 
We got some side lights and a front light. Yeah, very exciting. I don't know why it's not stopping us, but what? Whatever. We're gonna stop anyways before we start going uphill. I think. Maybe. It's funny how I get so much arrow drag when I'm in the air, but the second I hit the ground, it just keeps going. Ah, ah, ah! Whoa, it's getting a little bumpy. Whoa. All right, we've had a total brake failure, and I think it's time to uh, fix that. And of course, we get a lot of money back from bringing everything back without dying. I mean, we've used a little bit of fuel, right? So we got to pay for that, but for the most part, everything else is working. Okay, so now, here's the idea. We, for the most part, have a few missions going on here. We have our, our Rumbler on Duna. Which has traveled a little bit. We've managed to complete another mission on Duna uh, in that little, you know, break between sending the Horizon and then, you know, now. So we've gotten a little bit of stuff from Duna using that, which is nice. But I think it's time that we send another Rumbler out because it's been proven a successful rover to use. So I'm thinking that we send one to Eve now. Uh, this one we could be a lot more inefficient with the fueling and everything because... The Rumpler, to begin with, had so much fuel left by the time it got to Duna that, you know, who, who even cares? Like, I floated around Duna for the longest time trying to negotiate my way into finishing that contract, and it just it just wasn't working, so I wasted a lot of fuel with that, and I still had plenty. So we're just going to go to EVE, and this thing, uh, we don't plan on ever recovering this, but we might one day. Uh, we want to load... We want to find our rumbler.